Singapore scientists have found a way to replace feed for fish farming with a kind of protein extracted from the wastewater that is used to process soybeans. Now, the breakthrough could mean more sustainable fish farming of certain species, like the Asian sea bass. And for one, their usual feed is typically made from wild-caught fish stocks, which are becoming depleted in the oceans. Scientists have been able to replace half of such fish feed with a single-cell protein that's derived from microbes found in nutrient-rich wastewaters. It's hoped that this new method could cut waste and even improve food security. And here to share more are Dr. Diana Chan. She's head of Aquaculture Innovation Center at Tomasic Polytechnic. And we're also joined by Professor Stefan Wurtz. He's from the School of Civil and Environmental Engineering at the Nanyang Technological University. He is also Deputy Center Director of the Singapore Center for Environmental Life Sciences Engineering. Good evening to both of you. It's good to see you. Good evening. Professor Woods, let's start with you. Talk to us about the science behind the cultivation uh, of uh, the process. Why it is specifically that your team settled on the wastewater that's used to pro process soybeans? We did a market analysis looking for the kind of wastewater from the food processing industry that would be available at high volume in order to have a process that could later be upscaled. And so after doing this analysis, we settled on soybean washing water. And you'll see that in front of me, starting with the soybeans, which are then soaked. And that soaked after soaking, the wastewater is usually discarded. And now it's no longer discarded because we use that as the starting source of nutrients to grow microbes, which we then harvest and use as an additive in fish feed. Right, so we consume a lot of soybeans in Singapore is what I hear you say. This is scalable. It's, it's, mm -hmm. a, it's a novel protein and it's inter interesting because uh, Dr. Chan, uh, let's bring you in here. Why would, uh, you know, why would a value, a value chain become green from the use of this? Why is it specifically a sustainable way of actually sort of creating this novel protein? Okay, um, first of all, I think most of the commercial feed that's used for farming is using uh, quite a lot of fish meal. And um, we all know that fish meal is kind of um, uh, expensive because of it's actually using fish to make fish feed. So to find a, a sustainable source of a fish uh, protein ingredient, that's why we're actually looking towards uh, waste, liquid waste or processed food waste as alternative sources of protein. So this is good for farmers as well as consumers? Uh, well, for farmers, definitely it is actually meant for the fish feed. Yeah. Yeah, so for farm production. So if the production is higher, then consumers would benefit because that would help to bring down the fish costs because right. there's a lowering of the fish feed costs. And that's always a good thing. Professor Wurtz, how sustainable is uh, soybean wastewater? I mean, we know we consume a lot of soybeans here, so you're going to have that product. Uh, but you also have to grow the soybeans. I mean, we don't necessarily grow soybeans here in Singapore. We have to import them, don't we? like most uh, types of food that we consume. Uh, we did a, an analysis which is called life cycle analysis where we compared the impact in terms of different environmental categories uh, from the use of fish meal versus the use of this microbial protein. And in nine broad categories, there were great improvements based on our analysis. The second thing I think to, to remember is that our fish stocks are um, always in danger, so we, we cannot overfish. Mm. And as the fish industry grows, we need to keep up the protein level in their fish feed. Right. They, they need a good quality feed that's yeah. at the heart of this. Dr. Chan, how will you be keeping the costs down? Then you mentioned that before, that it's going to be cheaper. But uh, can you specifically talk to us about about that and how you, you're going to sort of encourage the purchase of this eventually? Okay, I mean, we're talking about the production costs, right? Keeping the uh, farming production costs down. Uh, first of all, I think it has got to do with the fish feed. Then if we could uh, replace the fish meal with a more sustainable source, lower cost, like what we are doing right now in the project, that would be one way. But the other way is actually to make the feed a little bit more digestible. So there's, there's less feed wastage into the water and then it creates a better water environment for the fish to grow and the farmers will be able to produce more over a long haul. 
And other than that, it's a feeding practice because usually the farmers would may actually tend to overfeed. And when there's overfeeding, you're actually leading to feed wastage. And then it drives up the cost of feed costs and production costs. Right. So there's a bit of a vicious cycle there yeah. in terms of the management of this. So w- what is next in terms of commercializing this product? We are talking to our industrial partner and um, we are interested jointly to scale up. And that means we take it out of the lab and into the the main production facility. And that is uh, possible because the wastewater volume is high enough. And so we're talking about doing this uh, in the next two years or so. Um, okay, that, is so not, that is not yet commer- commercialization, but it is one right. big step It's progress. It. Yes. Well, thank you both for coming into the studio and talking to me about this. It's been a pleasure seeing you. Dr. Uh, Ch- Diana Chan there from Tomasic Polytechnic and Professor Stefan Wurtz from NTU and Celsi. Thank you.